Hello, welcome back to Script Breakdown. In today's video, we're diving into the thrilling world of Winning Time Season 2, Episode 2, and uncovering the true story behind the captivating events that unfolded. As the Los Angeles Lakers journey continues, this episode takes us deeper into the lives of our favorite characters and offers a closer look at the challenges they face both on and off the court. In this recap, we'll break down the key moments that defined Episode 2. From the intense on-court action to the behind-the-scenes dramas, we're leaving no stone unturned and bringing you a comprehensive overview of the episode. But that's not all, we'll also delve into the real-life events that inspired this episode. Winning Time has always drawn inspiration from the actual history of the Los Angeles Lakers, and we'll explore how Episode 2 aligns with the true story while incorporating the show's signature twists and turns. HBO's second season of Winning Time focuses on the Los Angeles Lakers' 1980-81 off-court drama, including conflicts between the coaching staff and players. The dramatization of events and the presentation of hypothetical information as truth in the show raise the possibility of misrepresenting key plot points and characters in the series. The differences between Magic Johnson's and Coach Paul Westhead's approaches to the Lakers' offense were at the root of their disagreements, with some teammates becoming resentful of Magic because of his notoriety and showy playing style. The team's early elimination from the 1981 NBA playoffs was partially caused by this. The second season of HBO's Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty focuses on the off-court turmoil that surrounded the 1980-81 Los Angeles Lakers. Even after Magic Johnson's thrilling return, there are still growing tensions in the locker room between the players and the coaching staff. After missing 45 regular season games due to a knee injury, the Magic returned to the lineup. The seriousness of the on-screen conflict between Magic and Lakers point guard Norm Nixon was dramatized in Winning Time, Season 1, by taking a number of liberties with reality. Similar to the rest of the series, Episode 2 of Winning Time Season 2 presents speculative material as reality. While amusing, this strategy obscures some of the HBO series' most important turning points and plot developments with minor mistakes and inaccurate depictions of its characters. The 1981 Lakers season was concluded in the second of the seven-part Winning Time Season 2 episodes, which also laid the groundwork for Paul Westhead's inevitable fall from grace. The Lakers' Norm Nixon-David Thompson trade was actually on the table. During the 1980-81 campaign, it was true that the Lakers were considering dealing for Denver Nuggets player David Thompson, and they had expressed interest in him. Winning Time accurately portrays how Coach Westhead might have vehemently objected to the deal due to his affection for Nixon and his readiness to defend his methodical offense, which Magic and other egotistical players like Thompson threatened. Magic's fame started to affect the Lakers' locker room in the 1980-81 season. Some of Magic's teammates did start to think that the star's desire for attention was detracting from their team's overall dynamic and harmony. Magic's outstanding rookie campaign, which resulted in an all-star selection and an NBA championship, put him in the spotlight for basketball. His teammates were frustrated by his quick ascent to prominence, to the point that some of them even began to harbor jealousies and resentments towards him. It is understandable that many of Magic's more experienced colleagues were irritated by the young player's showy and disruptive approach, given his hefty contract at the age of 21. After their 1981 Round 1 playoff defeat to the Houston Rockets, this locker room strife ultimately caused the club to fall apart. There's no record of Norm Nixon bad-mouthing Magic Johnson to the press. The second episode of Winning Time Season 2 provides a very clear account of how sly Los Angeles sports writers in the early 1980s circulated rumors of annoyance and jealousy inside the unsteady Lakers locker room. During the 1980-81 Lakers season, the press was undoubtedly a constant presence in the locker room and may have contributed to the team's eventual division. No precise account, though, exists of the real-life Norm Nixon telling the Los Angeles Times on record that nobody will remember Magic Johnson in 15 years. It also seems like a fabrication that the persistent journalist Fred Fletcher from Winning Time Season 2 typified the spirit of many Los Angeles sports writers at the time. Fletcher comes across as a tenacious journalist who wants to learn more about the dynamics in the locker rooms of past NBA champions. The Lat Times piece Norm Nixon, Life at Number 2, which appears to have appeared in Winning Time on March 3, 1981, is only used as a creative plot device in the HBO series. While highlighting the team's genuine off-court disputes, the fictional story falsely paints Norm's persona as the main cause of the Lakers' internal conflicts. Jack McKinney actually won Coach of the Year with his new team in 1981. Ironically, the news that former Lakers coach Jack McKinney had won NBA Coach of the Year was accurately announced in another newspaper headline in Winning Time, Season 2, Episode 2. McKinney won the prestigious award for the 1980-81 NBA season after taking the head coaching position with the Indiana Pacers after being let go by the Los Angeles Lakers. During that season, McKinney guided the Pacers to their first NBA winning season in franchise history, making him the undisputed frontrunner for the coveted prize. 
This factual inclusion in winning time highlights how Paul Westhead may have been seeking to honor and recreate the coaching technique that he had learned under the supervision of McKinney while perhaps being too attached to the past. Given that his mentor had recently won Coach of the Year for using his own strategies, it also serves as justification for Westhead's entitlement to his systematic offense. This suggests in winning time that Westhead may be more suitable to serve as a coach somewhere else. Thank you for watching.